Hi, um, if you've been following my feed for a while, you'll know that it's gone to shit, basically. Um, there's a reason for that. I had a plan in my mind to do long linkage form videos like this one, um, which is anything over three minutes. You know, a couple of months, this, that and the other. And what's happened is, I've always been doing my shorts. The short feed has worked really, really well for me, just to put out a bit of content every day. And it was fine. It was a 60 second um, bit of content that I could put out. And then if I wanted to, I could add another few and do like four in a row. And I know people don't particularly like that, but you know, they were getting, and I know this doesn't matter to you guys, but it matters to me. They were getting engagement and getting four or 500 hits a day. That was fine and it ticks it over and it helps your YouTube account and it helps your algorithm and it helps people to know you've made another video and left they don't like and subscribe. So I've never asked for this, but if you, if, if you want to know what's going on with my stuff, you're gonna to have to, at the moment, subscribe. And you can un unsubscribe at a later date, that doesn't even matter. But the problem is YouTube's completely balls everything up. What it's tried to do is take um, short, form videos into the three minute range and it's completely cocked up the feed. So the shorts feed, which was up to 60 seconds, where all my shorts went, now all the ones over 60 seconds but under three minutes, I presume, are in my other feed and also the algorithms aren't letting people see them. So basically, I'm gonna make this now. I haven't got a clue what the reach is gonna be or anything. And I don't even know if my subscribers are actually seeing it because the truth of the matter is I've had people that do subscribe saying they don't see my video content anymore. So that's, first of all, that's an apology for me. I don't know what YouTube's doing. I actually thought three minutes is great. I'll start doing some three minute videos. And then I went to upload a video the other day. I went out, shot three minutes, come back, couldn't upload it because it only accepts 60 seconds. So when I last spoke to YouTube, they said it would be about six weeks or something before it was sorted out. And since then, it's just got worse. So first of all, today, I know this is a project video, but it's a bit of an apology as well. Sorry to everyone that follows my shorts feed. And if you're watching this now, waiting for projects, I am going to talk about projects. I just wanted to get that out of the way first. So Derek Taylor, props to Derek Taylor. Um, night at the fair, Derek Taylor. And in the front cover of this, somewhere here, there's a bit of an introduction there. I will put the link to where you can get this from below if you want to have a look. This is Derek's work. I will tell you a little bit of an irony about the whole fair, and I'm not gonna show you every page because then you won't buy it. So it's only about 19 pound, I think, that with postage, I'm not 100% sure. I will come back to this in a sec. But the funny thing is, I went to Hull several years in a row on the October time when the fair was on and we stayed in a hotel where some of the fair workers were and we never actually went to the fair and the reason is is because it was the Hull International Photography Festival so I went there to help or exhibit or talk or something over a course of three or four years over the course of three or four years um, and one of the times it was just after my father died which is ironically coming on to the next book but anyway so all the time we went to Hull it was for another reason um, so to actually see Derek doing a book on Hull Fair is very interesting and different take that's his. You I remember when someone makes a book, which is I'm going to talk about projects, is this is Derek's take on Hull Fair. This is the way Derek sees Hull Fair and this is the way Derek sees the streets around Hull Fair and the little right up in the beginnings about Derek's view of Hull Fair. But this is Derek's project. Now, if you buy this, you're looking at Derek's work, the Derek way he wants to shoot it. You don't have to buy it at all. I will put the link below. It probably give Derek a few pennies towards his projects or a pint. Who knows? It doesn't cost. It doesn't get help him a lot. I'll tell you that for nothing. But it's always nice to see what other people are doing. Now, there's two. I'm not going to talk about help this holding this in my hand. But sometimes you look at other person's work and you don't like it, and, and that it doesn't even matter. It's their personal project. I'm going to show you some of mine as well in a minute, and some of my early stuff or some of the stuff I did years ago. You'll think oh my God, that's shit. Well, that doesn't really matter because that is the whole point of projects. If you ever look at your own Flickr feed, if you've got Flickr, or your own Instagram feed, from when you started in digital photography, you will think and look back and think, oh my God, I was terrible then. I'm so much better now. And that is the point of taking photographs and doing projects. It's a bit like, if you know anything about strength training or powerlifting or anything like that is, 
you know, when you first start in the gym, you might be able to lift a bag of potatoes, you know, and then give it, give it 10 years later, you can lift a car above your head. I mean, it's a bit of an extreme thing, but progress, and you have to be able to measure progress. In weight training, you can measure progress by the amount you lift or the size you're getting. In photography, you can measure the way your work's going by putting it in a feed somewhere, Instagram, Flickr, etc., or by doing projects and doing personal projects, it helps you improve and learn. And also, laying one of these books out, I, don't, I haven't asked Derek, but laying one of these books out and putting photographs in these books isn't a five minute process. It can be if you want it to look shit, but if you take your time over it, it can look good. I'm not gonna look through this too much, but this is not by me, it's by Philip Toldano. And it's about some time with his father, when his father wasn't very well. Um, I don't really want to, I don't really want to, it's very emotive, that sort of thing, but it's, it's, it's a project he did, and I think it's a project that other people, Matt, Matt um, Finn did one on, um, on his mother and his father and some other stuff like that. These are projects that are personal to you a lot of the time. I don't overly know sometimes whether they should be sold on or shared. I don't know the answer to that. Maybe, maybe not. A couple of times people have said that people have made money out of their mother or their father's demise or whatever. I don't think that's true. I think it's just something they did at the time and I don't see anything wrong with that, especially if you're the first person to do it. Stephen Wales, I've left this one sealed because I've seen the pictures at another time. But Stephen Wales had his signed it. I do like a signed book or a signed zine from a friend. Did a project on Glasgow. Um, and that was personal to him, as I say. Uh, if, I, I don't know where the link is. I, if, I'll try and find the link and put it below. If not, I haven't got it. And then Sam Ryan, another friend from Glasgow, did Chasing Shadows. Not too sure what this book is on. Might have been Blurb. But I'll come on to that. Um, I'll show a couple of little cricket shots from that. This is just Sam's Ryan's work from, and she's done a couple of exhibitions now, etc. cetera. Um, um, so Sam's Ryan's work there. Um, I always talk about this one. This is um, Dave Vaughan's Couples. Uh, Dave Vaughan did my projects workshop and he not only did a book on couples, which I thought was very good and very brave. Um, lots and lots of stuff there. So they did a very excellent take on couples, even breaking it down to little intimate shots of couples or couples doing things together. And at the end of the book, he had like couples holding hands and then older couples. So right at the very end, there was older couples. And then he put it all together and indexed it and dated it. An excellent, excellent, excellent book I bought off him. Um, and. A, a real masterclass in how to put a book together. And he put a lot of thought into putting that book together. I started off, I used to show this at workshops I did. This is my Year of Black and White project, which I've spoken about before. I'm not gonna bore you with all the intricacies of it all. But it was when I was struggling to change from black and white film to black and white digital, I decided to take a year out to learn how to process black and white photographs in digital that gave the same feel as they gave me and same feeling as they gave me in film or analog, whatever you want to call it. So I did a year of black and white, I took out a year of black and white and I've said it many times before, one of the things I really missed, if you follow my Instagram feeds, one of the things I really missed was autumn. I didn't bother shooting autumn and all of the autumn colours. I probably in hindsight, should have probably shot it in black and white to see how I felt about it, but I just didn't have the feeling for it. And then I did a 52 week challenge with a load of other people and put this book together, um, which is 52 week challenge of self portrait reflections. Um, and over a course of a year, 1st of January to the end of December, whatever year it was, 1st of January 2015 to the 31st of December 2015, I shot this 52 week self-portrait challenge and they were all actually done as reflections. Um, they're available on Instagram. If you look at my Instagram, you'll be able to find all the photographs anyway. But I put this one together again in a blurb book. Um, I'm not, 
you can look up bur blurb yourself and I'm not going to advocate for different things because things change in prices and you'll think bloody hell but you know something like this with the, with the year's photographs in it 52 weeks actually so 52 photographs in there would cost you about 30 40 pound and in the year of black and white one there was slightly more so it's about 50 pounds and so that's not you don't get a lot for your money so you have to really think about these things before you start putting them together and different sizes cost different amounts of money and different photographs but I will just tell you this um, and I'll go with this one self-portrait challenge it probably took me um, I don't know a month to lay this out and I know that sounds weird but if you don't notice on that page for instance you've got two reflections with mirrors in and car mirrors and things like that and I wanted to try and put that type of thing like a reflection in a mirror or a reflection in the, in the door that matched and so that when you turn the pages it all made sense so there's a lot more to put in a project together than you think. Uh, there was a guy that was doing a project with me at the time and what he did was he got an offer on a book. He messaged me and said, oh, I've got an offer. I've, I've put all my images in there and I've sent it off. And I went, what, like that? And he went, yeah. I went, well, how much was the offer? And he said, like 12 quid or something. And I said, so 12 quid and you've thrown all your images in? Yeah, and I said, but you didn't lay them out and you didn't think about them. Oh, no. I said, well, it'll look like that when it comes back. And he looked at me as if I was stupid. And then when his book came back, he goes, oh, that book was shit. And I said, well, it's because you never put any thought into it. So if you're going to spend a year doing a project, don't just throw all the bloody photographs in there willy-nilly at the end of it and think it's going to look good. Because if you've spent a year taking the photographs, spend a bit of time laying them out in the book. There's no rush to finish the book. I know someone, and if you watched my videos before, you'll see that I know someone that's done a photo book project every year he's been doing photography. It started off with the loose leaf photographs with the little clips on the corners and the cellophane over. So on his bookcase, he's got hundreds and hundreds of these books for every year of his life that he's been taking photographs. And if you open the first one and then open the, the last one, obviously you can guess it. The first one's just a load of ratty tacky photographs put together as a project and on the last one it's a really nicely bound lovely book that's up to you it's up to you to do it the way you want to and don't get me wrong you don't have to do projects you can just keep putting your stuff on instagram or twitter or Flickr or whatever the new latest photo thing is out there i don't know but there is nothing as good as seeing your work in your own book on paper and there's nothing as good as seeing your own work printed, especially when you've printed it quite big and you've printed it on nice paper and it's been done well. It really gives you a feeling of accomplishment. So this is a bit early. I was going to do this in January. As you know, I was doing a travel pass project this year. The travel pass project faded into nothing and failed because I just started the wrong project and it failed. And I did that once with another project. And, and the project was shooting my friends from um, social media because my friends half of them didn't turn up or they just couldn't be there on time. It was a complete nightmare of a year. So that was another project. Felt. I learned a lot from it though. I don't like shooting my friend's portrait, so I never bothered doing it again. So no project's really a failure. My travel pass project this year has been a failure, but I've learned from it. And that was the, the, the gamut was too wide. Travel pass doesn't really work. Like a self-portrait reflection is myself in a reflection and it's a portrait. It works, it's simple. If you make it too wide a gamut, you, you can't work with it, you think you can and you can't, and that's what I did wrong this year. So, I'll come back to the night at the fair, like I said I would, Derek Taylor's. Simple little book, I think that's somewhere square. The images in it are both landscape and portrait in places. I don't think he's got any square images in it. So, he's just made them all fit in there. Um, landscape of a portrait that's what you've got to do and you've got to think about it I personally think photography projects are really 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 valuable to your learning and I know there's gonna people who are gonna write below this you don't need to just go out and enjoy your photography yeah you can just go out there and enjoy and take your photographs but if you really 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 want to every year take your photograph up a step one level to the next and learn there's nothing better than sitting down at the end of the year, printing out your own work, putting it in a book and having a look at it. Even if you just do prints and stick them in a loose leaf book so you can look at them. And the reason I say that is this. One of the magical things about printing stuff out is you look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. And I remember having all my photographs laid out one day and when I was very, very young um, with one of my uncles getting me to do it. And I'll cut the story short. Is I then realised all my horizons were wonky. 
this is on film a long time ago when I was like 10, 11 years old. I realized from that, not only are my horizons wonky, and I didn't know that fact, that if I didn't know that, what else don't I see? And that's part of learning to see and part of a workshop I used to do. So a lot of people, when you point out things to them like, well, your horizons are all wonky, they get really annoyed and angry and think, oh, you're an asshole, why didn't you tell me that? Well, you should have found that out for yourself. You shouldn't be told after you've been taking photographs for 20 years that your horizons are wonky, right? And that's the funny thing is, there was an argument on social media one day where someone else pointed it out to someone else and I told the person, stop getting upset, he's right. Even your header on your Facebook, if you just scroll up, you can see it's nowhere near in line, it's miles off, it's like that. And he goes, it's artistic representation. I said, no, it's not, it's your horizon being wonky. But the thing about it is no one gets what I'm saying. And that is, if your horizon's wonky and you haven't noticed that for 10, 20 years, what else is wrong with your photographs? And you should have seen that because you should have, taken hundreds and hundreds of photographs and taken enough to print them out and look at them and have a really good look at them and show them to your friends and your family and everything else if you don't want anyone online to see them and ask them what they think. Get your own critique off your own family and friends. You don't need critique online because everyone will just slag your work off. But if you do these books, you will look back and you'll think, oh my God, I wasn't very good back then 20, 30 years ago and look how good I am now. Does it matter? Of course not. If you want to just take snaps and go out and enjoy your photography, just take snaps and go out and enjoy your photography. There are hundreds of thousands of images sitting on phones and cameras all around the world, all around the country that never get seen and never get used. But the way I was taught that a long time ago is your photograph shouldn't sit in a drawer under the bed that's back in the photographer and um, uh, analog days for no one to see. They should be enjoyed and shared. And when I was younger, we used to get the projector out and do a slideshow. In fact, I've done that with Jane the other day. We got the projector out here. I looked at a lot of old photographs. People used to go around each other's houses to sit down and have a projector show over holiday. Probably used to drive people absolutely bloody nuts. You're not going to do that these days. You're not going to get the projector out and do a slideshow of your project. Or well, maybe you are actually. It's not a bad idea. You can buy a projector on on eBay for 12 quid and shoot, you can't shoot slides anymore. But anyway, there you go. Oh, I don't think you can, I haven't looked into it. So anyway, there's a few of my friends' projects there. Chris Thurman, Claire, um, everyone, a load of people I know that have done my workshops, have done projects. And some of them, it's helped them get on. When I did my year of black and white, I ended up putting a load of those photographs in Amateur Photographer magazine and, then I, and uh, Black and White magazine and a load of other magazines. From doing that one project, I've got probably three to five years work out of that one project afterwards. And if you're a pro, that's one of the things to do is your projects will help you develop and progress throughout your career. And if you look at any pro's work, you'll look at it. I was going to bring a couple of other books down that are commercial books, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do this more of an amateur point of view and the way you could do that and improve. But every professional photographer I know does projects that helps them grow and improve year on year on year. From Steve McCurry to Don McCullum to everyone. Don McCullum may be doing a landscape project at the moment or this project, but they're all doing projects to help them learn and improve. That's all for now. Sorry my feed's a mess. I didn't want to make this one too long. Get out there, try and think of a project you can do from the 1st of January 2025 to the end of January 2025. Sorry, the end of December 2025. And I might even come up with one and I'll join you on it. I've got to have a really good think about what I want to shoot next year and make it easier for myself. I'm not going to tell you what I've got planned for the future just yet because that's up for me to do. I have tried a few things to try and see what I can gauge works on YouTube and some stuff just doesn't. But I know I've got a core following of a few people and I know I've got the members on my channel that enjoy watching everything else and thank yous to those guys. I will try and produce what you want to see but I also will give you a no bullshit view about it all. And just sometimes like this year, this is probably one of the years I've failed in a project. I've had a lot going on in my personal life and everything else. But next year I might be able to join in, but I definitely am going to start moving back to photography properly at a certain point in my life. And I've got that planned out as well. And at the moment it's not really working for me, but I'm going to try and make it work a little bit next year. But in the future I know when I can definitely start again. And that's due to the way I've planned my next five years, etc. Have a great time. Enjoy the fireworks tonight because you're probably either going to watch this before or after it. My dog's unfortunately developed a fear of fireworks, and uh, which is unusual because I've never had a dog that has feared fireworks. 
And it's not the actual bangs, it's the fizzy lights and everything else. And I think it's because we got caught out by one the other day that went off very close to one of our windows at home and it made him jump. And I think I jumped at the same time, which is never a good thing. Anyway, have a good firework night and think about a project for next year and I'll make a video in December probably and we'll talk about it. Take care, see you later, bye.